Hi, my name is Dave Fowler. I'm a senior project manager with the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District. I'm standing on a rock in the middle of Underwood Creek, which used to be a concrete line channel, but now it's a bioengineered functioning stream system. Uh, this project really began in the late 1990s uh, when there was widespread flooding downstream along the Menominee River. Uh, Underwood Creek is a major tributary of the Menominee River uh, and contributed to that downstream flooding. As a result, the Milwaukee Metropolitan Sewage District started a series of flood management, planning, design, and construction efforts. The, the channel was concrete lined, so there was a definite absence of in-stream habitat, but because the side slopes were compacted and they were right up against the concrete, there was no connection between the floodplain and the actual stream. Using new techniques, soft engineering, bioengineering, came up with the ideas of taking out the concrete without increasing the risk of flooding and giving some functionality back to the stream. What we were trying to accomplish out here was to restore native plant communities, not only for the purpose of, of increasing botanical diversity, but for stream bank stabilization and creating wildlife habitat as well. Yeah, well, we've seen, uh, of course, ducks out here. Uh, I think uh, blue herons have been out here, uh, sorts of all sorts of uh, uh, amphibian life and bugs and and critters of, of all sorts. And in order to do that, SEH had to first of all determine what type of hydrology would be in the floodplain. In other words, how many times the floodplain would flood and to what depth during the growing season. And that establishes really the types of plant communities that you can replace in a certain area. Really one of the bigger challenges was sizing this channel. Uh, because we are in an urban setting, uh, we have a highly altered hydrology. Uh, which means we have very high peaks and very low base flow conditions. By increasing the size of the channel, we actually make room for the river. Instead of trying to confine the river into a narrow channel, we've actually given the river a chance to spread out a little bit. One of the design concepts for the restoration project was to provide a framework to accommodate variability in the floodplain. Uh, so where I'm standing right here is a, is a sandbar that's developed. Uh, sand has been washed down from upstream and is formed along uh, this part of the floodplain. Uh, that provides variability and that's okay. What we've allowed here with this large floodplain, that water has a chance to filter through vegetation and improve some of the water quality aspects of stormwater, which in many urban areas is quite polluted and needs to be addressed if we ever hope to get this river back to some functioning stream that we all would love to catch fish in, maybe wade in, maybe even periodically when the flows are high enough, put a boat in and canoe down. So the entire floodplain has been lowered to, to give that connection between the overbank flooding and the plant communities. So you're going to get a different type of plant community altogether than what was here before. Uh, the floodplain has been lowered about 10 feet from the pre-development uh, stages and that allowed us to uh, hydrate the floodplain and bring in wetland species and plants and so forth. About five acres of constructed wetland was developed as, a, as part of this project. And if there's to be any productivity at all or any kind of habitat, that had to be reestablished. The connection between the stream and the floodplain so that the overbank flooding occurred in the floodplain to provide water for the wetland plants and for the wetland dependent species that live here. Uh, right there is a, actually a bioengineered embankment slope uh, with a series of layers of uh, geocells with eight inches high. Where I'm standing is one of the large boulders that were placed here strategically in what is the beginning of a pool area. There are riffles and pools and these boulders are all strategically placed to deal with different flows that come down the stream. A riffle is right here in front of me uh, where the water is shallower and, and goes faster and you can actually see how the the water ripples uh, through. So you can see the, the moving water course here. Uh, it's shallower and quicker, moves faster. Uh, in between ripples you have pools, normally at the outside of a bend. Uh, and then in those areas it provides aquatic habitat during dry weather conditions. We continue to take out these sections of concrete. We'll have a connection all the way down to the Great Lakes and now all those fish in the Great Lakes can, can move up and down into this system. And the channel was designed such that there would be typically a minimum of, of nine inches of depth even during a low flow condition. So there's a little V bottom uh, which concentrates the flow. And the types of habitat that we provided here allow for fish, aquatic insects, and other aquatic organisms to have a place of refuge during those high flows when they go screaming past. If we use rounded alluvial stone, it's better for our habitat. Uh, normally a, a riprap is angular, it's crushed limestone. 
uh, and that's not uh, very kind to uh, animals and, and amphibians and so forth. Uh, uh, turtles will get stuck in the angular stone. In terms of how it's different from pre-construction to, to now, um, it's night and day. This, uh, this area that we're standing in right here was loaded up with um, crown vetch. It's a very invasive species that was all over this floodplain, as was the purple loosestrife and reed canary grass, three of the biggest offenders that we could have out here. Um, and so this is a little more complicated than planting a garden. <laughs> Quite a bit more complicated. Um, same issues though, really, when you look at it. What you have to do is maintain your garden to remove weeds, otherwise the weeds will outcompete the things that you're trying to grow. When you think about all the functionality, the fact that we took a concrete line channel and made it into this, I think, beautiful system, it's given us a palette on which we can base a natural system, a natural wetland, recapture those floodplains, reattach the river with the floodplains. I think that's what makes it a great idea. Well, it's just really, it's really nice to be able to provide a kind of a natural setting in an urban area. We're no longer trying to confine nature into this little space that we're allowing it to be in. Instead, we're allowing nature to kind of spread its wings a little bit and get back to where it used to be.